British policeman has always been the trusted guardian of law and order. This trust has been rooted in the feeling that a constable belongs to his neighbourhood and that he is the friend of everyone who lives there. They know him and help him, just as he helps them. Trusting him as they do, they talk freely to him so that he gets a lot of valuable information, valuable for preventing crime. In most modern towns, this relationship between public and police is less close. Unlike the village copper, the town policeman finds it difficult to know many of his people. Little of his time can be spent detecting crime, and even less preventing it. Much of what he has to do has little effect in the war against crime. So those natural partners, police and public, have become estranged divorced. Both feel frustrated. The public feel crime is increasing and the police are doing nothing about it. The police feel the public couldn't care less. And without public help, effective police work in Britain is almost impossible. Without information, a policeman's job may be reduced to waiting for a criminal to strike and hoping to catch him in the act. And even then you can't always catch him. Lack of mobility and lack of communication, as the reports say. Maybe he'd use plainer words. So the criminal has it easy, under cover of a mass of people who have only informal contact with the police. He can move freely and fast. Obviously, conventional police work and equipment need looking at, hard. For over two years, the Police Research and Development Branch has been investigating the effectiveness of conventional methods of policing. The results of these investigations have been really remarkable. We have found that during his time on patrol, a uniformed constable on the beat does no positive work against crime. Although by his presence he prevents some crime, you can remove him from the beat for quite a time without there being an appreciable effect. If a constable is supported by two or three more constables, there still is little effect on the crime rate. A very much higher number of constables are required to make an impact. One conspicuous patrol car will do the work of at least five uniform foot patrols when it comes to prevention. From these results and a study of a mobile beat patrolling, the requirements of the new organization emerged. Available manpower must be employed more efficiently. The old intimate contacts with the public must be restored in order to obtain useful information. This information must be widely and effectively used. It can be so used by greatly improved communications and mobility, and this improvement can only be obtained from modern equipment. The scheme evolved from these requirements is a unit beat policing system, which restores the basic methods of policing and develops the advantages of modern equipment. The area to be patrolled is broken down into units, taking account of acreage, road mileage, population, and the incidence of crime. They are controlled from the center of the town where possible. Each unit beat has a number of area constables, usually two. Each area constable has a part of the unit as his beat, and he either lives on it or within easy access. Each unit has one panda car, 
This car patrols 24 hours a day and requires five men to man it. Each unit has a detective constable. The area constable, the panda car driver, and the detective constable all have personal radios with which they are in continual contact with each other, with the other units, and with the control. Units are controlled by personal radio from the police station. An officer, called a collator, receives, records, and disseminates information throughout all units. The duty sergeants supervise the daily work. That is the basic layout of the scheme. It uses 10 men to police an area which before would have needed 15 men to cover three traditional footbeats. It has fulfilled all the requirements that we wanted it to do. And the men working it are really enthusiastic. Now I'm an area constable, I don't parade for duty. I simply report to the sergeant that I'm on my area starting duty. Constable Gray, unit 6A for duty, sergeant. Sergeant Thompson receiving. Reporting on duty, Sydney Road. Anything for me? Yes. See Mrs. Francis of 14 Old Street read a complaint of damage to her car. The two boys responsible have been traced and we will be contacting her again shortly. And will Mr. Stead of 37 Lime Avenue collect his dog from the station? Wilco, cool. I'm going down to the auction rooms in Bailey Street first thing to see if anything's come in. Uh, I shall be down at the primary school about 11 o'clock, see if they've seen anything of that man with a telescope. Uh, will you ask Panda 6 to bring out a photograph of him with the Daily Bulletin? Wilco we'll and out. Being an area constable is like being a village bobby. I live on my patch. People get to know me and so they talk to me. I make a special point of getting to know people who see and hear a lot. Cafe owners, people who work in garages and pubs, hairdressers and such. Useful information about the area and the people in it. That's what I'm after. And that's what I'm getting. I can use my own initiative, more or less, about when and where I work. I choose my own tours of duty, and I can wear plain clothes when necessary. And I can get all the help I want over my personal radio. My receiver's always switched on, so they can contact me any time. Hello, Mrs. White. More trouble with the lads playing football? No, they haven't been back, I'm glad to say. We're very grateful to you for seeing to that. No, I'm afraid we've got trouble of a different kind. Oh, what's that? Well, it doesn't sound very much, but I think it's something you ought to know about. You see, there's a man come to live with Mrs. Newman in the flat next to ours. She says he's her husband, that he's just come down from working up north. But it seems a bit funny because she's been there two years and I haven't seen him before. Anyway, she seems very upset about it. And I don't wonder the way he carries on. He comes in at all hours of the night, banging about, always drunk. And then he seems to be at home all day because they're always rowing. It frightens me the way he goes on. I'm sure he's going to do some damage before long. Well, I'll make some inquiries and we'll see what we can do. Uh, now, let's see, presumably his name's Mr. Newman mm -hmm. and he lives in Hollowfield Flats. Uh, what number? A 16. Uh, can you describe him to me? Well, he's in his 40s. He's a bit fat and, and going a bit bald. All right, Mrs. White, you'll leave everything to me for the moment. Thank you. Unit 6A for collator. Collator to 6A, receiving. Can you give me any information on a Mr. Newman? 16 Hollowfield Flats. He's been causing a disturbance and uh, he's been away from the area for about two years. I think we might have something on him. All right, 6A, I'll see if there's anything on him here and call you back. Roger and out. This job of collator is the key to the whole scheme, I think. Before, we were chronically short of information and what we'd got didn't always get around to all the people who could have made use of it. For instance, take a constable who has been in an area for years, knows it like his hand, so he's promoted or retired, and all that information goes with him. Now, all the bits of information we get are put together and collated here, and when they make a pattern, we can take the initiative and make a coordinated effort. 
Collator to 6A, do you receive me? Unit 6A to Collator, receiving you. We have a record of a man named John Francis Newman, who answered your description. We have a different address, but that was two years ago when he was committed to prison for breaking and entering. He has a long record and is considered likely to commit further crime. I'll send out a photograph with Panda 6 if you will then check that it is the same man. Wilco, over and out. PC Denning, will you take this out to PC Gray? We think this man has come to live on your patch. If we find it definitely is him, we'll have to keep an eye on him. Details will go out to all units on the daily bulletin. Okay, Sergeant. The great thing about the Panda car driver's job is that you're always on the move and there's plenty of interesting work to keep you busy. You get to know the whole area and visit regularly the places the area constable cannot easily cover on foot. But the main thing, covering the area as we do from the town centre to the edges of the rural beats, is that you make contacts with all sorts of people. You deal with emergency calls and have routine duties, but there's plenty of opportunity through keeping your eyes and ears open for using your initiative to find out when and where you can be most useful. And with this radio network, you never feel out of touch, and you know that there is help and advice there just for the asking. You really feel part of a team. Panda 6 to Collator, do you receive me? Collator to Panda 6, go ahead. I have just seen John Francis Newman in Frist Street. He was talking to driver of a grey minivan, registration number 205DOU. They moved off very quickly when they saw me. Over. Thank you, Panda 6. Information received and recorded. Collator to Unit 3B. Do you receive me? 3B to Collator. Receiving. On the daily bulletin of last week, there is a report on John Francis Newman, just out after two years for breaking and entering. It has been confirmed that he has returned to this area and that he is likely to commit further crime. He was seen this morning by Panda 6, talking to owner of a minivan, registration number 205 D Delta O Oscar U Uniform. The owner is a man named James Paul Dixon, who lives at 33 Barrow Street. We have no record of him, but will you please make a few inquiries when you're in that area? We'll go. Over and out. Take this into Sergeant Rains, please. Oh, that's a file on theft from cars, is it? Yes. Thank you. The great point of this unit beat policing is that all the units and their members feel they are an integrated force, working together, not on their own. We can deploy and control men quickly and easily and concentrate our effort in an emergency. And the collation of information, radio communication throughout and high mobility means that we can take the initiative, move from the defensive to the offensive in the war against crime. That's first rate for morale. Unit 3B for Collator. Do you receive me? Collator to 3B, receiving. I was in Joe's Cafe, Barrow Street, in plain clothes this afternoon, and the waitress, Jean, told me that James Paul Dixon, who she knows, has been in the cafe trying to sell cigarettes cheap. Dixon has a tobacconist shop in Barrow Street. Watch to be kept until further notice on all cigarette stores and stock warehouses with particular lookout for a grey minivan in the immediate vicinity. Unit 3B 
to Panda 3. Do you receive me? Panda 3 to Unit 3B, receiving. Going off duty. I've just checked that Dixon's minivan is parked as usual for the night outside his shop. Over and out. Dixon's minivan has gone from outside his premises. It's been moved since I checked it was there, just after midnight. Over and out. Panda 2 to Sergeant Goals, do you receive me? Go ahead, Panda 2. There's a grey minivan, probably with false number plates, opposite Robertson's Warehouse in Lower Canal Street. Goods entrance found insecure. Possible break and entering. Over. Panda 3 and Panda 4 approach Lower Canal Street from the west, blocking the exit at Key Street. Panda 5 will take up a position behind Robertson's Warehouse in Chandler Street. I will go to the goods entrance at Lower Canal Street. No, repeat, no entry to be made to the buildings. But detain anyone found leaving or any persons found in the immediate vicinity of the building. Is that understood? Richie, will you come with me immediately, please? PC Black, you heard all that, did you? Yes, sir. Then stick by that radio in case I need anything. Yes, sir. Liaison between the CID and the uniformed men is much better now. With these cars and the radio net, we can really work together. Invaluable on a job like this. There is no doubt about it, unit beat policing works in practice. The area constables are establishing just the right sort of relationship with the communities in which they live. More and more information is coming forward and because of the collator it is being recorded and good use is being made of it. The panda cars are greatly improving the coverage of beats and no one doubts the benefits that are coming as a result of increased mobility. The same applies to communications, 
with the introduction of the small, lightweight personal radio sets. The scheme is flexible and can be adapted to particular requirements. It is economical in terms of manpower because it does not require so many men as the conventional footbeat system. This means that in future we have more money to spend within our budget on the provision of essential up-to-date equipment. Above all, the men themselves like the scheme. It has increased their enthusiasm and improved their morale. The reduction in the number of offences reported to the police in the areas where this scheme has been introduced is proof enough that unit beat policing is an effective step forward in the war against crime.